Check out six exclusive Kick Scammer episodes before they go live by supporting the show. Did you know that if you go to Kickstarter and you type in Halo, you will find 16 campaigns and every single one failed? I wanna take you for a ride. Yes, guys, welcome to Kick Scammers, the YouTube show that looks at all of the bad, the terrible, the stupid, and the morbid side of Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and GoFundMe. On today's episode, I plan to look into the weird world of the Xbox. Now, you may not have noticed this yourself, but the new Xbox is here, the fourth Xbox. Yes, number four, as in Xbox 360, One, S, X, and now Series S and X, aka number four. <laughs> now, unlike the PlayStation 5, there aren't actually any exclusive games for the system yet, yet for some reason, it's sold out. So whilst you sit there bored out of your brain puffing vape smoke into this green glowing couple of game cubes, let me take you on a journey through the weird and wonderful world of Xbox-related crowdfunding scams. Projects like The Silencer, which was designed so that you, the player, could hear the games and not the opponents online. You know, for all of those people out there that couldn't be bothered to block voice chat in the privacy settings. Or what about the Watchdog video game time manager used by parents who like to get drunk in the kitchen with their friends instead of actually telling their kids to get off their bloody asses and do some homework. And then of course you got the Let's Burn My Xbox One designed by Rico Clark after buying it two months later realizing he had not much use for it for some incredibly stupid reason not able to sell it so he wants you to pay him 500 euros so that he can and burn it. Strap yourself in guys because this is the kind of top notch Xbox related quality content that you can expect in this. Four terrible Xbox Kickstarters. Welcome to Slope's Game Room. That's Ben Heck chap. You know the guy, the one with the whole storage unit full of items that we wish we had but don't need. Well, back in 2012, the guy put some serious time and effort into several Xbox 360 laptops. And although the majority of the world imagined what it would be like to create such a slick looking product, a couple of the guys in Texas decided to make one of their own. Hi Kickstarter, we're the Tech and we're here outside the tech shop in Round Rock, Texas. We're here to talk about the Dark Matter Xbox laptop, which is a project that we've been working on for the past many months. It's the world's first 3D printed, laser cut, open source laptop that's available either as a fully functional unit or in kit form. Take a look at what we've done. We're very excited about this project and we hope you support us here on Kickstarter. The project gained a decent amount, asking for $25,000 and receiving $29,716 from 110 backers. Now, when we look down the reward tiers, it's pretty easy to see how all of these backers spent their money. 24 basically did the big old thank you option, which does not actually get you anything tangible besides having their name on the company's website, which no longer exists. 21 basically got the PDF on how to make one themselves, plus an Xbox hacker badge. Add an extra six for the same tier plus a t-shirt. Two people chose to get a custom board, which was the bare bones needed to make your own laptop. The same again for another four people who also got a few extra internal bits like fans, speakers, components and what have you. Another two backers got all of the casing and buttons without the previously mentioned internal bits. One person chose to have everything needed inside including the LED screen, but this time without the casing. 
leaving exactly 50 backers, 32 of which paid between $499 and $1,249 for everything needed to either make it themselves or have one made for them, and of course, the remaining 18 never chose a reward, so we can just assume they dropped a single dollar down. Now the reason I went down this long route of explaining what everyone has just spent on this product is to showcase to you guys how few people need to be pleased to make this campaign a success. The original 78 backers were basically just buying off the shelf products and a PDF which apparently is already finished. But as this project gained momentum, they also included an Xbox One which, according to the comments, never ever got implemented, even though if you do look at the updates you can see that they got a working prototype. Several of the backers who paid the higher figures did in fact get their 360 machines, but the Xbox One machines never got shipped, and from what I can tell by this potato quality footage, they did indeed work, but everybody else had serious issues, primarily due to the Xbox 360's overheating. Yep, turns out that not all Xbox 360s are designed equally, and not only did the Xbox One machines never ship from what I can tell, but over time the duo just basically gave up. The ability to DM them went away, the entire website eventually went away, and their interests moved to other things. They only had 32 backers that they needed to please, all of which, like I said, spent between $499 and $1249, and even though a few did get their desired systems working, the majority didn't. As always with these campaigns, the comment section is now full of people calling this a scam run by two guys who simply need to buy, what, let's say 20 odd second hand Xbox 360s or Xbox Ones, slap them in cases with components that they surely already own, to clear their name. I mean, that would be the right thing to do, yeah? But then again, simply taking $30,000 just sounds so much easier, doesn't it? Okay, so this one isn't actually going to be taking very long at all. For all of those people out there that thought that Dark Matters Xbox 360 custom case wasn't exactly for them, well then perhaps Tinkertronics offering will be better. Yep, Tinkertronics, aka this guy, who is tinkering and always has been since he was five years old, apparently. He's using this Kickstarter to hopefully propel his backyard tinkering to the mainstream with... Go Bag, the portable video game console solution. Yep, this is what you're getting. A completely portable Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 or DVD player. Your choice, housed in this super stylish case that not even the most hipster apple grasping bearded tea drinker would back, right? Surely, just look at it. It's got air vents. It's got holes for things. And that casing is apparently three inches thick, so you got protection on your side too. Now obviously, jokes aside, this thing looks terrible. But that's not the big draw here, is it? Oh no, because inside this black painted cornflake box, it includes a battery, giving you a full three hours worth of playtime on your 360. Whether this was actually true or not, I doubt we will ever know or care about, because he wanted $18,500 for this and got 20, which isn't even enough for one case. Why? Because Tinkertronics wanted $500 for this. Or why not drop $1,000 to have your name on every single case shipped? Nah, I'm alright mate, especially considering this thing already exists, doesn't it? This is the immensely better quality and in quite a few cases, <laughs> cases, is cheaper too. Did he think that we wouldn't actually notice this? Well, no. Weirdly, he said he got his idea from these game cases, so what is the point in this Kickstarter? Oh yes, there isn't one.
In a world where every single game that's even slightly popular gets a remaster, you gotta start thinking to yourself, do we really need this many? And yes, I am fully part of the problem, buying games that are basically exactly the same because I think to myself, you know what? I fancy playing that again. The controls on the Nintendo Switch aren't even as good as the controls on the Wii U. Yes, I said it. Come on, Nintendo. It's been four years almost. Sort the bloody drifting out. Regardless, Nintendo are not the only people that do these remasters, PlayStation are not too far behind them, and then of course you got Microsoft with Halo's Master Chief Collection. But what about the indie games of the Xbox 360? And no, I'm not talking about the Xbox 360's live arcade service, I'm talking about the indie game service. I actually did a video talking about these seriously short pocket money prices video games back in the day with Clint from Lazy Game Reviews. Back to you, Slope. They were super cheap and mostly super terrible games that were normally made by just one or two developers who were simply dipping their toes into the world of video game programming. On one end of the scale, you've got great games like Bleed 1 and Bleed 2, which actually did get remasters. And then on the other side of the scale, you've got crap from companies such as Triskiller Games. Now, Triskiller Games created a game that was apparently so good that they quit their day job. They moved out of their house, they set up their own studio, and this game is so good that I can't find any gameplay footage of it whatsoever. Regardless, they pumped out a few more games, apparently, and then the service stopped, and that was the end of the studio. But one of the games they did pump out before they were forced to stop was Are You Smarter Than a Cheerleader? Hi, welcome. Wait, tell us a little about yourself. Well, my name is Lynn Love. I'm from Miami, Florida, and I love to party. <laughs> okay, are you ready to play? Now this gameplay footage you see right here is that very game and this Kickstarter was for a remaster of that game. Now obviously the game didn't get funded nowhere near. But that's not the interesting part of this story is it? You may have noticed that the original was called Are You Smarter Than A Cheerleader whilst the remake is called Are You Smarter Than A Porn Star. I mean he wasn't lying for the most part, 3 out of 5 of these dressed up cheerleader ladies are apparently porn stars according to him i did spend a lot of time researching this myself and couldn't find them but the real reason for the name change was simply to make it stand out it was a cheerleader on the xbox to get it approved on that system and it was a porn star on steam to get more eyes on the green light page but again it goes deeper than this the real reason he wanted eyes on the steam page is to promote his other games, his better games, and that was something that he stated himself. <sighs> yeah, better games. I'm sorry everybody, but it's time to bring up the Kinect. Who needs controllers? You are the controller. A system designed because doing this is 100% going to be way more accurate than doing this. Don't laugh. We all fell for it and some people actually enjoyed it. <laughs> well, what if you were someone that actually wanted more? You didn't want to control a game with your body. You wanted to control a game with your eyes. The Nuia? The Noia? Noia? iCharm Connect to Eye Tracking was a $50 to $60 attachment that you place on top of your standard Connect camera, plug it into your PC, and do such wondrous things as open up the start menu of your desktop, play Angry Birds, or draw pictures of, um, Quentin Tarantino? <laughs> And by the way, Angry Birds isn't the only game that you can play with this thing. Come on, seriously? Are you trying to tell me that this eye camera is actually going to be that precise? Obviously, it's not. I bet you're thinking that nobody's going to be falling for this one, right? Well, 
actually 1,390 people did bring the grand total slightly above its $100,000 target, making it the most popular German Kickstarter ever for the time. The campaign was very active during its funding days, but as soon as it did hit that goal, as expected, the updates definitely slowed down a fair bit. Literally months fell off the calendar, even went past the expected release date of July without a single word. August came and went and backers started getting hold of the company's emails and phone numbers, but still, they never got a response. One backer even went as far as to drive an hour to their offices to see the guy that he saw in the campaign. And when he did, he got brushed aside saying, now's not a good time, I have to go to a meeting. The company was logging in every so often so they could see the endless amounts of angry backers' comments simply waiting for an update, but they never gave one. That was until August the 8th when it was reported that an unknown company was suing them for copyright infringement. <laughs> You see, eye tracking isn't exactly anything new, and one of the many, many companies that have tackled this in the past is now apparently suing the company if they go ahead with this. Of course, speculation on whether this was actually true was rampant in the comments section, especially considering no name on who this company was was ever given, and yet another couple of months fell off the calendar until they came back apologizing again for the delay, but stating that they are finally happy to release the Xbox Connect add-on. Yet, nothing happened. The software did eventually get dropped into the hands of backers, and for those intelligent enough to actually unpack it and use it for themselves, they quickly realized that it was a load of crap. In fact, the freeware software that's out there for eye tracking stuff was far better than this crap. And shortly after, the company filed for bankruptcy. And that's it. Literally nothing was ever shipped out, besides some homemade software that was as good as free software and therefore in the eyes of Kickstarter, they apparently delivered. Thanks backers for the 100,000 euros. I'm sure that money had nothing to do with the company starting up again and not even hiding the fact that they are a different company. <laughs> Literally, they're using the exact same name, offering pretty much the same product. More eye tracking software, and I'm sure we can all agree that it's probably going to be better this time round. Thanks, of course, to the generous donations, because let's be honest, it's donations of 1,390 confused Kickstarter backers. With Nuya Full Focus, I build trust, even when we can't meet in person. So if you're interested now in trying it out for yourself, that thing with the eye contact has already worked out quite well. Hey there guys, thanks for checking out this uh, failed Xbox kick scammer video. Uh, I wanted to do one based on Xbox for a while, I've already done one on uh, Nintendo for the Nintendo Switch, you can go and check that out in my previous kick scammer list if you want to go check that out, and maybe a PlayStation 1 is coming up too. Thank you all, like I said, for watching this video, and thank you to all of my Patrons and YouTube members that allow me to do these videos every single week. If you want to be part of this awesome list of people that I'm uh, about to speak out, uh, then you can do so by checking the links down below, and you'll be able to see all of the exclusive Kick Scam episodes uh, before they go live. So yes, there you go. Let's give a massive shout out, shall we, to the following awesome Patreons and YouTube members. Aaron Gorman, Andrew Dalton, Andrew Ward, Arista, Benjamin Guy, Big Rico, Bram Perez, Brandon Gold, Caesar, Cheshire One, Chris the Rottweiler, Clan Bob, Conrad Constantine, Cromilla, uh, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Torres, David Yaron, Dina, Dina81, Dominic Devonport, Dr. J, expert in moonology, Elf Dautographs, Game Apologist, Gary Pinkett, hmm, Holly Samantha, Hutt, uh, Ignacio Jesus Create Creato Caracido. I'm butchering your name. Please, can you tell me how to pronounce your name? Intrigued Gaming, Jay's Manchild, Jabba Al Aiden, Jacob P, aka Avalon James, Jeff Ladd, Jeff Mianowski, Jeremy Rodriguez, Jonathan Hayward, Kevin King, Kinglink Reviews, Lucas Softel, Lipped, Man of God 9000, Marcus Kingimo Cut Tyndall. 
Michael Towns, Mind of the Unsane, Nicholas Burton, Nick Pollard, Petty Mew, Pretendo64, RetroReversing.com, Retro to Next Gen, aka Lou, Richard Aldergic, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Rocket Plod, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Rovan Army, Ryan Holtz, Sashi Dog, Samuel Nilsson, Shady Silence, or Shade Silence, Shadow Dragon, Solix Captor, Steven, Taylor Rainwater, That Gamer, The Cunning Linguist, The Shaded J, Tim Labonte, Tim Lunn, Tim, uh, Todd Paul Float G, Trans Rights, Vike Echo, Wobbles and Bean, The Wonder Ducks, and Ye Old Hamburglar. Like I said, all of these awesome people help support the show and help me make these videos every single week. So a big thank you to all of you guys for doing that exact thing. Like I said, if you want to see all of the exclusive episodes before they go live, then you can become a Patreon or YouTube member by clicking those links down below. And um, right now, for YouTube members, if you're a YouTube Premium member, you may even be able to support the show for free. It's only for certain people in certain countries. I don't really know YouTube's criteria, but you may be able to support me for free and see all of those exclusive episodes. So go and do that very thing. Thanks everybody so, so much for supporting the show. This is DJ Slope signing out and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.